Hi everyone, Dr. Tom O'Brien. I think we had a false start there. Um, hello, uh, nice to be with you. Our topic this, this evening is there anything I can do to feel better immediately? Uh, I'm trying to keep this short, so I'll go for 15 minutes. Uh, there are five things I want to tell you that can help immediately. And the first one is a Tibetan term called Maitri. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. I don't speak Tibetan, but it's M-A-I-T-R-I, -I, Maitri, or Maitri. And it means loving kindness and an unconditional friendship with oneself. Now, I've never been kind to myself uh, through most of my life. I had never been kind to myself. I always have expectations, and uh, I could probably do that better, and every once in a while I give myself a high five, but in general, I didn't have kindness towards myself. But this, so this term really resonated with me when I read it in a book, oh gosh, that was 12 years ago now. Uh, the book was called When Things Fall Apart, and it came across my plate when I was getting a divorce. And uh, Pima Chodron, and she talked about this term, Maitri, loving kindness and an unconditional friendship with oneself. So if you're trying to feel better immediately, it means most likely you're suffering from something that's been going on for a while. And you need some help because you've tried something and it's not working, or it's not working well enough. So the first step in this, and I mean this with great respect and dedication and life passion to help you get better, whatever your concern is, but it's lighten up. You know, as much as you can, take a step back and see that you're a body with that condition. You're not that condition. You're a body with that condition. And if you can get that overview, if you can start to get a little bit away from the suffering, not to minimize it in any way at all, but if you can get step back from it, then you can see a little bigger picture of how to do, deal with it. What might help? What might not help? How do I sabotage myself? What do I do that makes me feel worse? What do I do that makes me feel better? And so being kind with ourselves and the second part, having an unconditional friendship with oneself. Unconditional. I know I'm doing the best that I can do. You know, I'm going to screw up every once in a while, and we're all going to do that. And for me, that's one of the secrets of success in my marriage is that we both know we're going to screw up. And we just always want to catch it as quick as we can and be a better person and try our best not to do that again. So that's the kind of things that, that's the overview, my tree, loving kindness and unconditional friendship with oneself that you know you're doing your best, and if you're not, just be kind and say, I'll do my best tomorrow. I'll do my best in the next minute. You know, I'll take it one step at a time. Uh, Marzi wants to change the position here on this, so hold on just a second. Let's see if that's, oh, that slipped off just a minute. We're trying to figure out how to do this. Okay, there. Oh, oh that's how it works. Great. And uh, now i got to turn it down a little bit. There. Okay. Hopefully that works. You can still see me. Okay. That's my tree. May tree. My tree. You know, I've, uh, 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 I'll tell you. You know, I've got a Harley, Harley Davidson. I've been riding motorcycles since I was a little kid. And uh, it, my Harley is a very large and very fast Harley. And the license plate for the largest, fastest Harley is my tree. Loving kindness. You know, just be kind. Always be kind to yourself. It doesn't mean you're a wimp. It doesn't mean that you don't have inner strength when things aren't going the way you know they should go for you, you know, when you're doing things differently. You just be kind and know that in the next moment you're going to give it your best shot um, as best as you can. Hello from London. Hello there. Yes. Uh, hello, Lena. And when you um, uh, type in your questions, let me know where you're at. You know, now that I'm, we were in Costa Rica last week in London, and we go to Dublin tomorrow. So tell me where you are when you write in. Okay. That was number one. 
Number two, and you may have heard me say this before, number two, base hits win the ball game. Don't go for home runs. Don't expect that this chronic condition, when you see a new doctor or try a new therapy, this chronic condition is going to get better and be gone immediately. You know, that only leads us to feeling defeated when that happens. Base hits win the ball game. Just a base hit. Just go for the little wins. And sometimes they're big wins, but the little wins accumulate, and that's how you win the ball game. Um, Hello, Diana. I have severe ankylosing spondylitis that is actively damaging my spinal joints, which leads to fusion of the vertebra and loss of spinal mobility. I've been using functional medicine for three years with no improvements. Uh, I can't see any more than that yet, Diana. It'll come up. But, well, kudos to you for staying with it, and it means that something's missing. Uh, of course, I can't diagnose anything here, but one of the things you want to look for for ankylosing spondylitis uh, was, actually, it was the first impact in school back 35 years ago about genetics is that a new study had just come out on ankylosing spondylitis and that there was a gene, HLA-B27, that is directly associated with ankylosing spondylitis. And as some of you have heard me speak before, and this is true for all of you, if you have a gene, it doesn't mean you're going to get the problem. It means that you're more vulnerable to getting that problem. So if you have that particular gene, HLA-B27, that's associated with ankylosing spondylitis, if you get an infection with a bacteria called Klebsiella pneumoniae, if you get that infection, Klebsiella pneumoniae is one of the most common infections gotten in hospitals. It causes pneumonia. How many of our elders in the hospital get pneumonia? And you now can see, oh yeah, my aunt or my, my father or whoever it was. It's very common bacteria to be exposed to. If you're exposed to that bacteria, and if you carry that gene, and if your body is really overwhelmed and can't quite fight it very well, or your body makes the antibodies to Klebsiella, your body can, those antibodies for Klebsiella can then attack your spine. It's called molecular mimicry. And it was the first example of genes and the impact of genes that I learned back in 1979. Now that was published by Dr. Alan Ebringer from King's College in London. And the only reason I know that, I'm not that much of a geek, but the only reason I know that is because we interviewed Dr. Ebringer last year here in London for betrayal. And so, and I complimented him on his courage because he was ostracized for his entire career uh, because he said there's a bacteria that may be associated with this disease. And um, his, his colleagues thought that was nonsense. Uh, but I, kudos to him. He kept his courage and kept writing papers. And now he's um, a very well known and well received um, researcher, just retired last year. Uh, uh, but that whole story, story of Klebsiella and for ankylosing spondylitis. Um, uh, when will Betrayal be available again, Dr. Tom? Hello, Diana. Uh, uh, let's see. We're hoping within two weeks. Uh, if you um, receive announcements from us or newsletter from us, if you've registered for any of our stuff on the dr.com, we'll send the announcement out hopefully within two weeks. We've had lots of requests, and thank you so much. We had to rebuild the entire platform, not the videos, but everything around the videos. You guys have no idea. I had no idea what this takes, uh, but uh, we hope within the next two weeks. So number two was base hits win the ball game. Number one was uh, be kind to yourself, my tree. Number three, and it's what every doctor, every healer through all time has said so often Drink more water. And we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, drink more water. So here's the formula. It's a half ounce per pound body weight. That's minimum required. So that means if you weigh 120 pounds, that's 60 ounces of water a day. If you weigh 180 pounds, that's 90 ounces of water a day. Now that's a big difference. So some people say drink eight glasses a day, drink six, gla six glasses a day. That's going to be great for most people. But if you want to be bullet on, my wife weighs somewhere around 120. I'm not going to get, commit myself there one way or the other, but somewhere around there. I weigh about 180. So if I were to do 
um, the amount that she does, and I thought, that's what, that's uh, 120 is, um, how many eight ounce glasses is that? That's eight times, <laughs> she's 120 pounds, so that's 60 ounces of water. So that would be, eight times six, 48, nine is 54, nine and a half glasses of water a day. That, that doesn't seem right. For eight ounce glasses, nine times eight is 72. You know, so <laughs> she's roaring on the floor right now. So it's eight eight ounce glasses a day. So if she needs eight eight ounce glasses a day, I need 11. At 180 pounds, that's 90 ounces of water. That's, that's almost 11 eight ounce glasses of water, just over. So do the formula, one half ounce per pound body weight, and then do this. When you wake up in the morning, first thing most everyone does is goes, goes to the bathroom. First thing. The next thing you do, the very next thing, drink two big glasses of water. You're not going to want to. You're going to take a little sip. Just guzzle. Just go glug, glug, glug. Just guzzle down two big glasses of water. You're going to do this for three days. Just three days. Everyone can do this for three days if you declare you're going to do it. So the first thing in the morning after you go to the bathroom, two big glasses of water. You've started the day. So if you weigh 120 pounds, you're going to need six more during the day. And you count them off. Maybe you have a checklist. Maybe you have a little clipboard. And you just check off every glass. And every time you finish it, you go fill it up right away. So you take the last sips from it. You don't let it sit there because you're working at the table. Get up, stretch your legs, go fill the glass, bring it back, and get back to work. You know, but don't let the glass sit empty. Do this for three days. Count out a half ounce per pound body weight. And you're going to notice two things. One, you're going to go to the bathroom a lot. That's okay. You're detoxing. And two, you just start feeling better. You're like juiced because you are giving yourself the, the, the chemical, not the chemical, the physical carrier of your juice in your body. You, you have enough water. We've heard this so often and people just don't pay attention. How can I see this later? I love your advice. That means you're leaving me now? Well, uh, I'm just joking. Um, it'll be on the Facebook. It'll be on our Facebook. So thank you so much for coming. So that's number three is water. Number one, Maitri, be kind. Number two, base hits win the ball game. Number three, water, a half ounce per pound body weight. Number four, and you've heard me say this many times, stop throwing gasoline on the fire. What does that mean? Well, every disease, every chronic condition is a disease of inflammation, as far as I know, every single one, is a disease of inflammation. At the cellular level, it's always inflamed. So is it gasoline or kerosene? Is it your brain cells or your kidney cells? That's the difference, but it's all inflammation. So the first thing you want to do is stop throwing gasoline on the fire. And what does that mean? If you have food sensitivities, and you do, almost all of us do, if you have food sensitivities, you have to get the foods out of there that are fueling the inflammation, fueling the fire. Claudette, hello. What are your thoughts on Asia detox molecule? Okay, that's a little off track, uh, but thanks, Claudette. I'll get, if I have time, I'll get back to that. And when you write your messages, tell me where you are in the world. Uh, it's very cool when someone says they're in Thailand or they're in Montana. It's, it, Puts a reality out there, and I'm not just talking to a silly phone. All right, so thanks. So gasoline on the fire. And some of you have heard me say that um, Harvard published a study in 2015, Holland, H-O-L-L-O-N, and just go to Google and type in Holland and gluten study. And they showed that every single person that they check, every single person gets intestinal permeability when the small intestines are exposed to the peptides of wheat. Every single person, whether they feel sick or not. What does that mean? It means you're throwing gasoline on the fire. Whether or not you feel stomach pain, you're throwing gasoline on the fire that very often will go systemically, very often. Um, oh, hi, Maria. You're in the UK. So are we. Where are we? We're near, what's the castle? Uh, Hampton, Hampton Court Palace. That's where we are. Um, we were out in the country yesterday, a couple of hours away. Okay, so stop throwing gasoline on the fire. What does that mean? You have to find out what foods you're sensitive to. If you're not sure, get my book, The Autoimmune Fix. 
and follow the guidelines for three weeks. Just stop three foods for three weeks. Wheat, dairy, and sugar. And we show you how to do it every meal for kids, for adults, families. What's for breakfast, what's for lunch, what's for dinner. Do it for three weeks and just notice how much better you feel because you're not throwing gasoline on the fire, right? So that's number four is gasoline on the fire. Stop throwing gasoline on the fire. Number five, move it or lose it. So if you're bedridden, you move your toes. If you can't walk very well, you walk as much as you can, and then you sit down with soup cans like Jack LaLanne used to do and just do soup cans. You know, just do whatever you can think of, and if you are... Um, uh, if you're knowledgeable about how to do this online, you find online programs, um, sitting online exercise programs, if you can't walk. But move it or lose it. Go for a walk every day. Most of you are mobile. Walk every day. I have a headache. I don't want to do it. I don't care if you don't want to do it. you got to move it. you got to get your circulation going to flush. And because you're drinking so much water, you've got the carriers to carry the toxic crud out that may be con contributing to the inflammation you've got that's causing your headaches. You'll find that you just feel better afterwards. Now, don't walk when you're in pain. You know, now, walk when it's a pain in the butt to walk. Walk then, but don't walk when you're in pain. Don't make more pain. So if you walk and it's painful, use soup cans, use little weights, do something like that, but just move it or lose it. It always helps. These are the immediate things. You know, there's so much more, and that's why these Tuesday sessions, right? But So what are the five things? The first one, once again, Maitri. Loving kindness and an unconditional friendship with oneself. The second one, base hits. Base hits win the ball game. Just keep going for base hits, whether it's an autistic child or congestive heart failure uh, or migraines, or recurrent miscarriages, whatever the horrible or moderate condition is that you've got, be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Number three, water. Do this for three days, and you'll notice how much better you feel. Half ounce per pound body weight. Half ounce per pound. Number four, stop throwing gasoline on the fire. If you're not sure, just stop for three weeks. Wheat, dairy, gluten. Get my book, The Autoimmune Fix. Please get the book, not because I wrote it, but because it really is the guideline to give you the foundation of how to look at all these diets, all these different eating programs, all of these different areas of the body to work on, the thyroid, the adrenals, the brain. It gives you the big picture overview of how to deal with all of it. And number five, move it or lose it. Just move. Um, if you um, um, can, an excellent form of movement is a mini trampoline. That you, And it's not jarring on your body at all. Some people can just sit on it, and another person has to push it up and down because they're in a wheelchair. And then they write about a few weeks later, they're able to stand and hold on to a, a, a arm guard while the push, person's pushing it up and down. And then a few weeks later, they're able to push up and down themselves. Then a few weeks later, they're moving their feet themselves. I don't care if you're in a wheelchair. You put a chair on the mini trampoline. Do you get the concept? It's that you do what you can. You tax your body a little bit, but not too much. Never. The rule is up to, but not into pain. Up to, but not into pain. Tracy Sa has fibromyalgia. Hi, Tracy. I've given up dairy, gluten, sugar for five weeks. Amazing benefits. Thank you for testifying to that. I've been walking daily for a week now, and also all my pain is gone. Still have fatigue and brain fog. Well, way to go, girl. Way to go. High five. High five. Uh, base hits, you, you're getting doubles and triples. They're not just base hits. So way to go. That's really great. Um, uh, happy for you. You're, you're on your path. Try the water. Uh, uh, Kick up your water if you're not at at least a half pound a day because you probably have a lot of stuff to flush out. You know, guys, we're all so full of toxins. Um, uh, it's not good. And, you know, we'll, we'll do one of these on detoxing. Uh, but for now, I think that's been uh, just over 20 minutes, 21 minutes. So, uh, Tracy Sa, thanks so much for being the last message that I'll read here. And... Uh, Thank you all very much. And if you like this stuff, can, can you let us know? You know, I'm talking to a phone. And so it's uh, uh, just leave a comment, leave a message. What do you like? What do you not like? 
where you're from, and uh, um, we, we read them all. We read them all. So if you would, uh, please do that. Thanks very much, everyone, and see you next Tuesday.